Hello all, in this video I'm going to take you through some of the upgrades I made to my original router sled and show it in use a little later on. There was nothing wrong with the original version 1.0 sled for rough flattening of boards and small slabs but I feel it was let down a little bit by the old Bosch plunge base I used to mount the Maffel motor. Only really meant as a DIY base it lacked the ability for fine adjustment and the plunge was a bit clunky. It did have a 43mm collar though, same as the Maffel, which is why I used it in the first place. Plus, having experimented with it a little, essentially mortising, as shown in my last video where I made a guitar hanger, it just made sense to rummage through my pocket change and throw some lint at this basic setup to see if I could improve accuracy and adjustability. I didn't get to film the rebuild, but I will endeavour to talk you through what's been done. So here's the sled as it appears now, sled 2.0 if you like. Certainly looks a bit more legit I think. First noticeable difference is that the motor is now hanging out the front rather than in a cradle. I do prefer this for clear sight when setting up and working for that matter. You have to not be a tight git like I was with my version 1.1 though and take stiffness a bit more seriously with this mounting arrangement. One example being, as you can see here, my original cross members have been doubled up, creating effectively a 4060 lump of profile. As well as V-groove wheels with bearings on every axis, there's now also a ball screw mechanism for raising and lowering the motor. This is very smooth and offers very fine adjustment. The wheels on the side rails, like the ball screw Z-axis, I bought as pre-assembled kits from Banggood. I'll leave links in the description for these as per. Really good prices comparatively, although all needed a little adjustment to make good before use. So, if this were a CNC, there'd be a stepper motor at the top, but this being a manual machine, I just fitted one of the knobs from my woodpecker's feather boards, conveniently colour matched. Does the job just fine, giving me good, fine control of depth. To double up the cross members, I drilled four holes straight through one so bolts could be fed through to sliding T-nuts in the other. I had to give the bolt heads a bit of a haircut with the grinder so the mounting plates for the Z-axis could fly over undisturbed. These clear bearing wheels I again bought from Banggood as a 10-pack, really good value, cost 9 or $10 I think. The rest of the setup I got from Oosnest including the plates, 65mm bolts and the 6 and 9mm spacers for this assembly. Using a couple of spare L brackets I've made a depth stop. Pretty important feature on a router. One bracket is fixed to the Z axis gantry, the other is attached to its support column and adjustable. The motor mount itself and the sexy black corner brackets as it happens is an open build one I bought from Oosnest. This has, I think, an 80mm collar for DeWalt and Makita style trim routers, but the good old folk at Oosnest will 3D print you an insert to fit inside this. In my case, my collar needed a 43mm inside diameter. have to say, these are really well done and have a really good fit both in the motor mount and for housing the motor itself. I'll leave a link to Oosnest below in the description. I found them answering questions about products and options very swiftly online too. If you fancy building something like this or a CNC router, do give them a look. They call their CNCs Workbees. Obviously this isn't one, but a good place as any to pop the sticker they sent me. I mentioned adjustability at the beginning. The old janky router base had none, so accuracy was only ever meh and inconsistent at best. Now with two nylock nuts between the plates and Z-axis, I can tow the bottom or top in or out. Likewise, I can adjust the tilt left or right with the screws that go right through the plate and wheel assemblies. With the spoil board already flattened by my version 1.1 upgrades, I use it to reference square to the router, a big improvement. I can't overemphasize how important dust extraction is on these things. Routers create a lot of dust anyway, even just making a housing, but surfacing creates a ridiculous amount, so I made this. Just some non-slip matting wrapped in duct tape for the skirt until my brush strip arrives. The mount is made from the clear acrylic I used to mount the plunge base on the original version 1.0 sled. So with version 2.0 ready to go, first thing was a quick pass over the spoil board to make sure it's true to the new setup. The 
Dust extraction is pretty good with my knock together, but around the edges, I still need a good clean up. I use the 600 level as a straight edge to double check there's no dips or high spots, and it's ready for work. This 25mm MDF spoil board, by the way, isn't a permanent fixture. I was given it specifically so I can get on with the job you're about to see me do. Haven't decided what I'll use as a more permanent option yet. Something thinner, for sure. So here's the task in hand. They're pieces for a tread build-up on a plywood spiral staircase we're working on. But given the inconsistencies in the material, overshoot from first floor height means taking 2mm off one piece in each tread. 17 pieces like this to do in all. As face sides of each piece are hidden in a stack, I just pre-drill and screw each piece to the spoil board when machining. I zero the bit on a workpiece, then use a 1mm packer to set the depth stop for each pass. I found doing the first 1mm pass side to side, then the second end to end gave the best results. How it looks, not that it matters, seems to differ a little from board to board, but what matters is that we're in the vicinity of 16mm. With the digital verniers out, you can hopefully see we're between 16.1 and 16.13 on this side. Much the same on the other bar, a high spot at one end reading 16.3. Had this same high spot on every piece for some reason, but within two temps, I'm very happy with and is actually better than the original piece before machining. So given the results, hard to say this endeavour hasn't been worth it. It's performed about as well as I could have expected given the variables at play and the upgrades have already paid for themselves through work. Really impressed with the Maffel motor too. Really smooth and quiet, with smart electronics you can hear, busy keeping the blade speed constant. Now if we could anticipate a couple of comments here, some of you might be thinking I could have just used a planar thicknesser. Not only is the glue implied bad for your planar knives, but this setup gives me a 560mm processing width. I don't have the room or the money for a planar thicknesser capable of that. This construction, absent the Maffel motor, cost me 260 quid and is quite versatile as hopefully you'll see in future vids. Next, I imagine some of you might be thinking, especially with how it looks now, that it's only a stone's throw from a CNC and why didn't I just do that? Well, not really. Although that might be an option in the future, to make this a CNC, I'd need to invest in more stiffening and ball screw mechanisms for the sides, four stepper motors, controllers, cabling, power pack, and another computer or laptop to run it from. Again, I've neither the room nor money for that right now, unfortunately. This machine as it stands, when not in use, can just be hung from the back wall of the garage. No fuss, the beauty of a simple manual machine. Obviously with a dedicated planar thicknesser or a CNC, there's no hanging it off the back wall out of the way. So as mentioned, I'll put the links in the description for Ooze Nest and the part source from Banggood. If you haven't already, check out the video of my original 1.1 sled and by all means, have at it below with any questions, comments or recommendations for that matter. I'm open to it all. Stay well everyone and thanks for watching.